Okay, next in line after the check gauge is the span. And the span is measured from the inside edge of the guardrail, shown in green here, to the inside edge of the wing rail, shown in green here. So we're actually taking a measurement that spans across those two rails. The, uh, the, the span actually has a, quite an important job. Um, what the span does is determine the width of our flangeway. In this drawing, the span is set to the NMRA maximum size for HO scale, which is 564 thousandths of an inch. Uh, I'll, I'll change this number a little bit, and you can see how it'll affect the flangeway width. I've changed it now to 560 thou, and you see how it just opened up a little base on the, on the flangeway, which is this distance down in here. Let me just uh, redo that again so you can see how that affects it. I'm going to go back to 564. You see where it closes it up. And I'm going to open it back up now to 560 thousandths of an inch. There. Now, the span and the flangeway, uh, they, they work together. The span will actually give you a way to adjust the width of the flangeway and still control the distance between the wing rail and the guard rail. And controlling that distance is quite critical. As you remember from our uh, wheel video, there's a back-to-back -back distance, which is measured from this green edge on the wheels to this green edge. That back-to-back -back distance uh, is a minimum size for the wheels, which is 566 thousandths of an inch or larger. The span is a maximum size of 564 thousandths of an inch or less. So if we set this span distance to less than 564, we're actually going to create a little bit more clearance for our wheels to roll through. And I'll just demonstrate how the, the wheels roll through there. You can see there's plenty of clearance in there with the settings that I have. So instead of just setting our flangeway size to a number, we actually change the span size to control the flangeway. And by doing that, we make sure that the finished turnout will interact properly with the wheels. Uh, if you get that span a little too wide, what will happen is, as the wheels come down through the turnout, the back of this wheel will interfere with the inside edge of this wing rail. So by having a tolerant size on our span, which is a uh, maximum size, we can actually uh, control the width of the flangeway without uh, getting interference in our wheel sets. Next in line is our frog flangeway width, and uh, that's the distance between the uh, frog point rail, shown in green here, and our wing rail, shown in green here. That's the distance between those two uh, rail heads, and we, that's our, our frog flangeway. Now that's the only flangeway we measure. We don't measure this flangeway out here. That's the, the distance between those two rails uh, is controlled by the check gauge and the track gauge, and uh, and really is pretty much irrelevant to determining how a turnout's going to run. So uh, there is no measurement for out here. The flangeway only refers to this one. Now what this flangeway uh, size does is, is quite important. Um, as I showed earlier in how in the, uh, the video on how a turnout works, as the wheel rolls down, down the, uh, the closure rail, rides up onto the wing rail, catches onto the frog point, carries on through the turnout. So as you can tell, the narrower that flangeway is, the better chance this has to get across there without any interference. The last size I'm going to talk about is the track gauge. Uh, the track gauge in a turnout really isn't all that critical. Uh, as long as the track gauge falls within the NMRA specifications, uh, your equipment that runs across it is going to perform quite well. And I'll show you why that is. So let me zoom up on this turnout here. In fact, maybe a better way to show you it is I'll show you the turnout dead on the front. As you can see on the left side of the drawing, the rail, the wheel is sitting pretty much centered on the, uh, on the stock rail. And on the right side of the drawing, the wheel is sitting on our point rail. Um, on the left side next to the stock rail is the guard rail. On the right side next to the point rail is our wing rail and closure rail. So as the, the wheels are rolling through the turnout, 
it's uh, pulled away from that point rail by the guard rail. So the location of the stock rail in our turnout really doesn't come into play. So I'm going to show you here what happens when we change the track gauge. I'm going to change it to the minimum size possible, which is 649 thou. And you'll see that it moved over a little bit. It's still, the wheels rolling through the turnout are still going to roll the exact same way. The guard rail is going to grab the back of the flange way, the back of the flange, and pull it away from the, from the uh, frog point. And if I set it to the maximum track gauge possible, which is 672,000 HO, you'll see the rail jumped out. Again, it has no effect on how the turnout is going to perform. Now you might think that that could be a problem with the the wheels as they're rolling through the turnout that they can wander back and forth in the track gauge and uh, that's not really true because as it's coming through the turnout the wing rail is performing almost the same job as the guard rail so as that wheel set rolls through the turnout if it happens to be off a little bit one side or the other like this one way or the other it's kind of hard to show here that wing rail is going to prevent it from going any farther over than here. So it can only move this small amount. So as it's coming through the turnout, either the, the guard rail will either pull it to one side or the wing rail will move it over to the other side. And regardless of where it is sitting in that gauge, into that, uh, in that gap, it'll still perform across the frog as it's supposed to. I have to remember that uh, it's only a couple of thousandths of an inch that that's moving. So it's it's not going to be a noticeable amount if it uh, if the guardrail or the wing rail is pulling the wheel um, one way or the other. So really, the uh, the final size for your track gauge is it's really not that critical. Um, the way to ensure to get a turnout to run good and to run smooth is to be sure that the track is set somewhere within the range and your wheels are engaged. And it's advisable to keep your track gauge away from the extremities. Um, you, you don't want your track gauge to be either the narrowest it can be or the largest it can be. Again, uh, if the wheels have a little bit of wobble in them, which is pretty common, uh, the wheels can actually be going in and out of gauge. And if you have your turnout set at, say, the minimum track gauge, it's actually going to have interference as those wheels wobble. So you want to be able to allow for uh, some error and some fluctuation on your track gauge. So it's best to stay, you know, 5 thou away at least from the minimum track gauge or the maximum track gauge.